Photography is a significant medium. It has a strong relationship with memory because they both involve the process of recording images that may be used to recall the past. Photography could be like an archive, preserving things, meanings, and images. Though life at times may seem boring, dull, and ever so repeating, there are people who can capture interest upon the most unexpected subjects. Thus, the most common and banal aspects of everyday life appear more significant. Someone who does this unlike any other is Rinko Kawauchi. Utatane, which means something like dozing off. It's similar to the feeling of not wanting to sleep, but drifting off anyways. Being between sleep and wake. Or the literal translation would just be light sleep. When you open the book, in your eyes appear such banal subjects. A cup of ice water, a broken line of net, curtains floating in the wind, a cracked watermelon, a flat tire, a dead bee, butterfly, or pigeon. Even an open mouth. These are such regular everyday things that many people don't pay attention to. I prefer listening to the small voices in our world, those which whisper. I have a feeling I'm always being saved by these whispers. My eyes naturally focus on small things. I think part of the reason why I love this book so much is because it could have been taken from the vantage point of a child. It reminds me of a time where I saw things for what they were. I wasn't corrupted and distracted all the time. Renko talks a lot about how we should experience things, to be in the moment. Take a break. Turn off the computer. Turn off the phone. Don't look at a screen. Go to a library. Touch something. Experiences are the important thing. I feel like when I was a kid, I was always distracted by the world. I'd be fascinated by the most mundane of things, and... In this book, she encapsulates that childlike mindset of appreciation and curiosity. The book doesn't have a consistent pattern, but it has a sense of harmony. She uses lighting, composition, color, size, and format to tell a story. Thus, the book goes by fluently. Honestly, there is so much to unpack in this book. I'm just going to focus on a couple of the photos, and some things might not be so apparent at first, but the more time you spend with the book, the more you can get out of it. Uh, take for example this grouping, the light from the street light streaks down to the cage of mice who are all looking up to embrace the light. The way in which the two photos play off of each other is so clever. 
Each pair makes me reminiscent of something. Uh, maybe it's my childhood, but I can't really quite put my finger on it. This one may be a bit easier. On the left is a picture made of decorative sting lights amongst a building, and on the right we have a glistening pond. The two really have nothing in common, but both of them are covered with these shimmering spots. Both of their dominant hues are blue. They should not have relation with each other, but because of the way she paired them with each other, it just makes sense. This one, to me, symbolizes anxiety. Maybe fragility, too. Here is this grouping of crowded fish juxtaposed with these eggs on a frying pan. Again, these two images have no immediate correlation, but the dense, crowded nature is the common element between the two. The fish and the eggs evoke life and death. The suds of the washing machine are paired alongside the clouds. Maybe the sky is like God's washing machine. Her editing speaks for itself. The juxtapositions that she creates is what makes this book so great. The ways in which these photos are put together feel so natural like they were made for each other. The way she uses light, texture, and shapes to provoke emotion gives the book a certain charm. Her photos symbolize more than what I could ever put into words. I picked some of the easier correlations, but the book does go a lot deeper than that. I could sit for hours and go through this book, taking in the images and picking at the emotions that are evoked. I think that's what makes her photography so powerful and important. What I love so much about Rinko is that even in the most mundane of places, she can find something interesting. It can be compared to being at home for so long that you start to develop a pattern. So many things go unnoticed. It wasn't until I moved away and came back home that I noticed the beauty around me. Something that only happens when you become too comfortable. Everything in a place just passes by your eyes. She, even in her own home, can notice things that many people just cannot do. I'd like to end this video with a quote from Pedro Vicente. Certainly, photography constitutes a vital element for our physical assimilation and comprehension of the world. And this is not because of the representation of life or even the symbolization of death but because of the exaltation of life even in the representation of death. Renko Kawauchi's images formulate an exaltation of not only life and death, but also of nature and its life cycle. They provide us with a precious instrument to understand and appreciate nature, and therefore, our own daily lives. Her images glorify with their formal perfection a world not always perfect, imposing on us an immediate response to value more the beauty around us and maybe learn to see. What do you what do you hope when people look at all of these photographs? What are you hoping that they'll feel or see when they see your pictures? If someone uh, who saw my picture feel something would be nice, just something. There's a lot more for her to be discovered. She just released a book called As It Is, about the three years since her child was born. It's an ongoing story of her own family and the raw, abundant vitality that her child embodies. With the ongoing pain in the world, many of us have come to realize how precious and powerful these little moments are. Thanks for watching.